Hello, everyone. Ah, oh, welcome to the One Name Project podcast. It's so good to be back in the building. Hey, <laughs> um, <laughs> my name's Matt Cade, and I am your host. And I'm just going to have a little chat with you today. First of all, how have you been? How have you been? What the last few months, eh? This has been the craziest time I think I've ever experienced. The whole world has stopped. Um, We've had, obviously, COVID, which has been awful. We've had the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, We've had, now it looks like we're going into a recession. Um, You know, it's it's a tough time right now. But you know what? It's as tough as it is. All, you know, the Bible says all things work together for the good for those who love the Lord and are called to his purpose. And I feel like this is a great time for people who don't know God to to get to know him. Or people that already know him to dig deeper. God has just said, pause, stop. This life is not about what you can gain for yourself or for your family. Or what your, you know, what, what your career you can take or these things. It's about one thing. And it's about getting to know and serving the Lord Jesus Christ. So I think what we've had in these last few months is a great opportunity for everybody to just put down. Put, put, lay it down. Lay it down now. Lay it down. And let's get back to Jesus. And for me, hey, <laughs> that's been happening. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. That's a great song by Sarah Tabor, by the way. But I'm so blessed um, because these last few months have just had such a, a a lovely time and such a it, my my devotion with Christ has just gone to a new level. And I re I've, I've just really appreciated everything that this time has brought. You know. We, we working away for quite a long time, coming back to the city and being able to just sit with him and do in, in this time has been great for me. And it's really replenished me and given me a new sense of of um, his just his love and his love for people and, and why we're here and why I'm still alive today. And so um, as much as it's been a tough time and, and you know, people, you know, it's, it's been devastating, let's be honest. Um, all things can have their moment where in your life they can turn around and God can use something that isn't too great to be great for you. And I feel like I've been a beneficiary of that in this season. And so I thank God for that. But I really do think, people of God, that it is time to turn back to him. It's time to look to the Lord because, you know, I mean, does this not look like revelation? Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that this is the, the second coming is tomorrow, but I do feel like if you don't look at the signs that we've got in the world right now and th- think about Jesus coming back, then then you definitely need to be digging a little deeper because th- this is what this this is the time that we're in. Um what can I say? The race the, the race issue that we've had the past couple of months is the main reason for this podcast. Um, I just want to go, I want to go straight into it. Let's just talk about it. That what happened to George Floyd is not only, it, it, I mean, let me just put it like this. What happened to George Floyd was awful. No one needs to say anything. I've seen a lot of people maybe try and defend the police officers and by all means, you're entitled to your opinion but where is that? What's that opinion based on? Let's get into that. Let's not do that right now, but maybe we can do that by ourselves. Um, but I think for me, something that happened to me the other day showed just why this was so necessary. 2016, my Facebook come up the other day and said, four years ago, you said this. And it was something along the lines of, we have got to stop killing black people. We've got to stop looking at them as less than. We've got to stop, you know, using brute police officers have got to stop being brutal in the way that they handle black people i'm assuming that it was to do with eric garner when he was taken down and he was choked um as a result he you know he said i can't breathe which is exactly kind of what happened with george floyd and i feel that you know and so after four years we're still seeing the same thing like clearly no one's got the message and so you know colin kaepernick and everything that happened there Everyone got on him because he decides to take a knee. I'm not American, so for me, it's a little bit like, oh, wow, like, is, 
which is more important? You know, is he being disrespectful or is he trying to bring forth an issue? Does he have the right to do that? Um, and I, I, I felt like your law in the US says that you do have that right, but it caused an uproar. Caused an uproar and, and to be honest, the Bible says, you know, don't get involved reading and stuff that's not got stuff to be used. So I'm not going to put my two in that. I'm sure that people know why that was offensive to them. But I will say this we should be more offended that black men are being killed by police officers, um, you know, unnecessarily, especially, um, you know, with the knee on the neck. It's, hey, I mean, I couldn't watch all of the video, if I'm honest, because I'm tired. <laughs> you know, I know that that has been like a tone of phrase in this season, we're tired, but black people really are tired. They're tired of having to go somewhere emotionally that doesn't have a result from it you know we're tired we do not want to become desensitized to the issues of course we're not but we're tired to see people that look similar to us being taken and losing their life just because of the fact that their skin color might be a certain shade we're, 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 not, we're, we're tired of it and we're really not here for it so i was not surprised when i saw you know the uproar and, and, and I was almost like, I was impressed. And the reason why I was impressed, because I saw a lot of people in my circles start to really talk about this issue. Black people, white people, Asian people, all these different, you know, people. Talk, and they were just not having it. My white friends were just not having it. They were calling me up and saying, I can't believe this. And if I've said anything to upset you and da, 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 da. And I was like, Wow. I mean, I've not been having this for a hot minute, but you guys, you really, really, uh, there's something new is happening here. And so it impressed me. And I was like, okay, well, and I thought it was good. I was like, okay, you know, God, I think you're moving and you're doing some stuff. And this is good. People are seeing some of the hurts. And, you know, I shared a few Instagram stories and started to, you know, you know, just dabble down in it a little bit. And then... You, you, as a Christian, we've always got to remember whose we are. We've always got to remember whose we are, what battle we're in. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities in high places. We know that as Christians. So I started to see things start to take a turn. I was like, okay, okay. We, as, as, as and I'm speaking to Christians here, we cannot get our identity primarily from the skin tone that we have or our race or our nationality we know that if we're in christ we're new creations there's no jew there's no greek no male no female bond or free we're just christ there was a certain point in this the black lives matter movement when i was like i'm for this cause but i need to make sure that i don't become the cause as a Christian, I can be a Christian who fights for black issues because I believe that's what Jesus would do. But it can't be, it can't become my sole identity. I can't, to be clear, I can't use unchristian means and methods to, to support and assist this movement. I must continue to, to lift up Jesus and and preach what Jesus has said in what I say and also in what I do. So the the word is forgiveness. As black people, we need to forgive. We, we need to forgive. We need to forgive. Without forgiveness, there is going to be no... Um, and yet, as Christ died for us, for each and every one of us, for every sin. Christ died for the racist. Yes, he did. He did. People don't always want to see that because people think that God only died for sinners that maybe, you know, had a tough upbringing or, you know, or tried to live the best. But no, God died for the worst of us as much as the best of us. Every sin was put on the cross. So in this Black Lives Matter movement, if we're ever moving in a direction that we've decided that you, you, you're wrong and you should pay for it and this is right. If we ever get into unforgiveness or anything like that, we, we, as Christians, we're in error. We have to lead with forgiveness and model it because it's not easy. It's not easy. And, it's, and you know, 
I think one of the one of the things that has been a little troubling is you know the oppression of black people was awful in America the slave trade awful the fact that we that black people were not allowed to vote awful but the changes that happened one of the main figures obviously was Dr Martin Luther King and if you listen to his speeches and to the the words that he spoke yes he was he was he was on purpose like he was not to be messed with in terms of what he was trying to do you know he got arrested he had all those things but he was also a reverend and a lot of what the a lot of the things that he believed and what and the way that he managed to convince i think so many of the white americas was that he used the bible and showed that god had had created us equal and that we were all deserve you we were all deserving to be treated so you can't be a christian and then say that oh these are the best ones and those are the not so good there's none of that god is not is 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 he's not um partial he doesn't show partiality in that way he doesn't he doesn't prefer someone else that's not the god that we serve and if if we don't get to grips with that we we can never really truly serve God. So one of the things I want to put that want to point that out about Martin Luther King is because you know if we're gonna look back and see how black people gained the freedoms that they did have to gain, it was it happened in a way where yes there was resistance, yes you put, there was a time when people had to uprise and 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 resist what was happening, but as but as time went on, these things had to be fought in a way that was going to be beneficial, not just for black people, but also for the community at whole. It isn't, and this is where I think maybe some may get offended. I don't feel, if I'm honest, I don't feel that we can really move forward without first forgiving and secondly, not looking or seeking for people to pay. My friends, my white friends, that are, shouldn't have to pay for the injustices caused by hundreds of years of racial injustice. I just don't believe that. And, and, and I just don't think it's going to happen. Um, there has to be a point where we fight for equality but we show those that maybe don't see us as equal what treating people equally looks like we have to honor one another we have to look to each other and say you know what no I'm, uh, i know you you know may struggle in this area but and i know that you you may be a racist you even watching right now you might be racist but i'm not gonna I can't, as a Christian, attack you for that and make you feel bad for that. I'm not going to do that. I know there's loads of I mean, Christians. In, we've, we're, all, we're all sinners. Let's just be clear. We're all saved by the grace of God. And we don't always show the love of God and the acceptance of, that's found in Christ. Sometimes we can be quite hard-hearted. Sometimes we're bruised. and Sometimes we're prideful. And sometimes we're just like, no, this is what the Bible says. And... The, you know, there's a season for everything, but it, the main aim of us as Christians is to show people the love of God. Um, Jesus loved everyone and does love everyone. And if we're going to be trying to convince racist people not to be racist, the only way that we can do that is by showing them what? Showing them how to treat people with love, kindness and forgiveness. So... The Black Lives Matter protesters, and, and, and I'm very much with it, and, I, and I, I support what I believe most people that are um, involved are, you know, suggesting and fighting for. I think as Christians in this time, we really have to be aware and make sure that we're representing God on all, in, in all spheres. Now, it's hard. Now, I've got some friends of mine. I'm not going to name them. <laughs> um, 
but they're they're not very sympathetic to the to the racial injustice that black people go through and and it's tough and god has taken me on such a journey of being able to be around voice certain voices or you know groups of people that don't sympathize with what it can be like to be black in a predominantly white country and you know any kind of um favor or initiative that may be brought in to help balance it out gets shut down or becomes um a racist uh thing against them and it, and it's tough it's tough because you know it, it, i like to think that if it was the other way around i'd see the need um you know and, and i think that's that is a christ thing it's it's, it's you know the good Samaritan seek taking care of the people that may be in need. Um, you know, not from a prideful place or a, you know, an ego place, but sometimes it's shocking. But God has had to show me that people are in different journeys, on different journeys, and who's to say that something might change in them in a, in a, a week or two, or even the way that I treat them may get them to see a little bit of Christ. Because... What we're not saying in this movement, which I think is important, we're not saying or suggesting that black is better than white. And if we are, we're incorrect. Hello, somebody. Um, <laughs> we are not. We, we're black people are not better than white people. Can we just put that out there? Um, most black people who have been talking about Black Lives Matter know this. Um, and we've never, ever been suggesting it. Black Lives Matter is about equality black lives matter because just as much as white lives but at the moment it's black lives that are under attack so we're highlighting their lives so that someone will say oh oh yeah they they do matter just like mine matters you know that's what we need to do help them out it's like loving your neighbor as yourself i mean i don't know if there's anything that could be closer in terms of analogy black lives matter is basically love your neighbor as you love yourself but that's how I see it. So it's not saying love your neighbor more than you love yourself. It's not saying that. You understand? And, and even if you were to eat, and, and no, and, and, and to try and even go down that line would be perverse. It's love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's, that for me is what Black Lives Matter is all about. So I think if we continue to try and walk down that line and and, you know, help people understand or help them by showing them how to love. Then that's the way that we get this equality. I, I see it like this. Jesus, the Lord of glory, the one who created the universe, the heavens. He was sat in heaven. Blessed. Wonderful. He, I mean, he has all that he needs. But from his privilege, shall we say, he decided that he wanted to go down and help someone get back up to another level. Now, it, you can't be too crude with this comparison because in, in this respect, God is much better than we are. But he used everything that he could in his love to bring us back to full standing with God by giving his life in exchange for ours. It was a loving thing to do. The Black Lives Matter movement is similar in the in the sort of saying, okay, all people with any kind of privilege, the term white privilege has been used. How about we use some of that to make sure that we all get the equal rights and the equal opportunities that we need. It's it's only going to happen if we all do it together as a race and it's not a black white thing i mean the people say it's everyone against racists well maybe you know but then again i don't feel and this is where many people are going to get upset but i don't feel that we need to disregard racist either we're not sending racists to racistville and we want racists to change 
we want people that think that black people are lower or or maybe have got really bad opinions of black people or asian people or chinese or whatever we want their hearts to change we don't want to punish them now that can be hard because you have to kind of work with it but i think if we push people away and say oh you're a racist and we don't want nothing to do with you it's just going to birth a new problem so what we need to do as a community and as a country and as a planet is say it's everybody against racism racists are always going to be here they're you know people are always going to feel a certain type of way until jesus come back they're going to feel a certain type of way about people that are different it's just the way that it is right but if enough of us can show the beauty in being united and loving and caring for each other they're going to diminish and diminish and hopefully all then will come from and say you know what this racist thing is not right you know that 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 should be the aim and sometimes with black lives matter i feel that it can lean a little bit and, and and to be fair you know what it's early stages people are angry i'm i'm i've got the grace for that i've got the grace for people being angry but i just think as christians and as people that want to see serious change we cannot it can't be us versus them it, it, it cannot be we are brothers and sisters we are all one every everyone is made in the image of god even a racist the image that they have is of god it's broken and it's got all these you know missing parts but at the, their core they are god's creation and god said don't be costing my creation you know god's very clear in the bible he says oh who are you to talk about my creation you know so we should never get to a place where we're because we feel so right in our plight against racism that we can actually um you know talk down and look down on someone else we just can't, we just can't be doing that okay so that that would be the thing that i would like to just impress on this black lives matter movement i think it's great that we've had such a response um, i just want to just say that there's been such a a release of 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 heart and um and of confusion in this time because you know seeing people like leona lewis and liam from little mix you know share their stories just it was kind of encouraging to see that even when for, for me leona lewis is like the sweetest woman you ever knew you know she's lovely she's kind um she's talented and to hear her account of how she was treated in that chelsea uh, i think it was a shoe store or something like that even with all her you know nice you know her, her her manner is just so pure and lovely that she was still discriminated against it's encouraged me to say you know what as much as i'm a little you know i can be fiery and passionate you know can look maybe i'm a little scary because i'm a big black man it really doesn't matter about that because it it, it really can just be the fact that you are black why people would you know resist you in in, in the society we live in so I, i'm really thankful for people like leona and um leanne um i know i saw misha b she did a um instagram and obviously um talisa the the judge who was on x factor when misha b was on there they had a little thing and and you know they had a i think it was on a twitter or something they you know talisa was like this saying it this isn't what happened and and i don't know in that situation um but i would say one of the things that we cannot do as, as black people um and and i'm speaking to my my black brothers and sisters up in here um this can't be that everything that we go through comes down to our race some of us are just we have character issues just like anything else you know um it would be it would we it would be ill of us to abuse what is been what is so precious and 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 so um I won't say sacred because it belongs to God, but it's something that, you know, this moment is going to be so powerful, not just for us, but for people coming after us, that we don't want to tinge it with, with laying everything down to, oh, it's because we were black. Some, you know, a lot of the time it has been that, but sometimes we have to realise that there are certain, there are other things that come into play. Now, you know, maybe some of those things wouldn't come into play if people treated us correctly. I get that. But I think, once again 
if we can move forward and and decide that we're going to do things in a certain type of way and that we're going to forgive and we're going to let go and we're going to still be passionate and we're still going to be pure with our motives of equality and fight against injustice but we do it in such a way that we say that you know what i'm not going to get pulled into doing things how maybe a racist might do it or so, or someone who's against me do it. i'm going to do it in a loving and kind way because black people have been through a lot you know Black people made it through slavery. Yeah. There are there are many races that went through a lot that, you know, we don't know of anymore. But And glory to God, you know, we, we, we've been able to break through. But I just, you know, one of the things that I think about is like, how would those people that fought to stay alive, you know, on the, on the slave ships, you know, when they got to the Caribbean, when they got to America and they, they had their lives and they fought to get freedom and they fought for the vote how would they want us to how would it best represent them in this season you know how would martin luther king be speaking now you know a lot of people have their opinions on martin luther king and i've seen people try and almost radicalize him to a certain extent and you know he wasn't just a you know oh it's you know we'd just be very you know docile and no he wasn't that and and neither was jesus either jesus was very assured about what he was trying to achieve and didn't sway to the left or the right but i think that first of all let's let's see what god is doing and let's speak to him but even when we look back at our civil rights leaders that are, you know that i believe god is that god rose up um to, to to assist the race we have to look at the way in which they did it even harriet tubman i was watching um the movie with Cynthia Erivo, fantastic movie. I'm a big fan of Cynthia Erivo, have been for some time now. But she did, um, in it, you can, they, I love the way that the director and the writers wrote this story because they allowed for the relationship that one has with God to really be on display. God said, go left, she went left. And that was the way they had to go to escape the, 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 the slave catchers. It was really amazing, but... What I loved about it, it gave glory to God because it, it just showed that God was in the midst of this deliverance, just like he was with Moses and the children of Israel. He was, he was there and just like he was in Christ when he delivered us from the devil and his, and his, uh, his rule. So d don't ever feel that being a Christian means that we, we have to be passive. But we, we absolutely most definitely must be surrendered to that what God is doing and that what we're doing lines up with his word. So I'm, I think I'm going to tie this up now. And thank you for <laughs> listening to me ramble. But I just felt like it was a time to come and just spread a little bit of what I believe God would have us remember as we, as we fight for um, not just for against injustice, but for, for the things of God. That we fight, that, that we remember what, ba the battle is the Lord's, but remember what battle we're actually in as Christians. And, and, and for my black brothers and sisters who may not know Jesus, you know, our ancestors, a lot of them did know Jesus. Yes. A lot of, hmm, a lot of your grandparents knew the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. They knew God. Hmm. They knew God and they knew they, they, they fought for you. They fought to to keep you, you in mind so that you would be able to have this day. So I just say to anyone who's there, who's listening online or, you know, you may be away from the Lord. Remember that God's blessing goes to the thousandth generation and, and God is in your life. And God is calling you and God wants you to be blessed. And he sees your pain. He sees what you've been through. He knows what's been going on. Um, but just but just, just know that there's a way. There's a way. And the way is Jesus. Even if you were to get free of your own situation, you'd still need to get free of the major one that holds down every human soul. And that is the, the, the penalty of, of the sins that we've committed. And, and it's Jesus that will set you free so remember we, we we can't be sidetracked we can be you know this is a season that we're in when we're doing with race but there's a bigger issue and the bigger issue is that if you were to die tonight where would you go if you were to be 
you know, if but, um, God forbid, but if something was happened to you and you died this evening, where is it where you would be going? And if you were brought before God and he said to you, why should I let you into my kingdom, into my heaven? What are you going to say? Will you say, oh, it's because um, I've, I've been good or um, I, I fed the poor, I gave money to the needy? But if that's the answer, that's really not going to be enough. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say those things are good, but they won't pay for your sin. The only way you get your sin paid for is if you give your life to Jesus and ask him to come into your life. Because that's the, that's the condition for salvation. Jesus has paid the price for every sin. He is the only one who can pay for, you, for, for our sins. The only one who can, who can deliver you from death. So I ask you, and I, I just pray with you that, that if you're in that place and you need um, your sins forgiven, that you would come to Jesus and ask him into your heart. A prayer as simple as, Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. I ask you, Lord, I repent and I turn away. And I ask you to lead me and I ask you to guide me and show me the way to live my life. I thank you for dying for me and I believe you rose again on the third day. Thank you, Lord, that I will live with you in eternity. Hallelujah. Amen. A simple prayer like that or even similar or something similar will take you from eternal death into eternal life, which is where the church will be going. Thank you for listening to me, everyone. I didn't, I didn't necessarily plan for that, but I just felt like, you know, it was, it was really a time of sharing and really a time of just speaking into this Black Lives Matter and just remembering that God is, God, is for, God is a God of justice and he's for righteousness. And, he, and he's, he's involved with this Black Lives Matter protest, I believe. Um, but let's remember what the bigger issue is. We need, first of all, to be kingdom focused. We need to bring souls into the kingdom of God. But we need to remember that there's a bigger beast than racism and it's sin. And it's, it's, it's the dominion of the devil. So let's just continue to press on. Thank you for watching. I'm hoping to do a few more of these. Um, bear with me as I navigate this new, this new realm. Um, but God bless you all. Thank you for watching the One Name Project. I appreciate you. God bless.